and welcome to Thunder News. Today an urgent reporter is coming and reporter Charlie is interviewing Professor Alfie who has invented a time machine. Are you with him now Charlie? Thank you Nathan, yes I am. So Alfie, how does the time machine work? First you spin the wheel to whatever time you would like to go to and then you press the button and you are off into the past. Why did you make the time machine Professor Alfie? I made it because I used to watch films and programmes about Doctor Who and that inspired me to make a time machine. Wait a minute, should that light be flashing? Which light? That one there, that says 1950s. Don't touch it! Oh no! Oh! Where are we? We seem to be in the past. Everything's foggy and gloomy. Up in the sky, look! It's a plane! It's Superman! Hello, my old friend, Professor. My name is Superman, and who's your friend over there? What are you doing here, Superman? Look at all the smoke and pollution in the streets coming from the factories and chimney. I promise you, in 50 years' time, I would have got rid of all these things. In this area, there was a continuous pall of smoke every day, except for a week in August when we had a week's holiday. And the ovens belching it out. You know, when you come to think of it, there must have been nearly 4,000 ovens. And in October, November, right into March, you got this low cloud keeping it down. So we were breathing this, what was termed in London as smog. That was a new word to us, but we lived with it since near I. Everyone still remembers the smoky, dirty hell we all lived in. A city where the grass wouldn't grow. A city where the sun never seemed able to penetrate the pall of smoke. I can see why everybody's pleased to see the passing of the pot banks. Oh, we know. There are sparks everywhere and it's unbelievably hot. I think we have come to a big iron foundry where they used to melt down metal and make other things. Now this is really a place for a superhero. Let's go around exploring. The steelwork at that time employed about 3,250 steelworkers. There was a centre plant that was relatively modern built in around about 1958. That processed the iron ore, refined it, to get a greater efficiency. We've got two blast furnaces in blast. There was always one under construction, although you've got three, there was only two in blast. We had a continuous casting plant aligned with the steel processing plant, which were caldo converters, uh, a Swedish method an oxygen lance was put in and it was like a giant cement mixer only this went up to 70 tons of hot metal it's quite a staggering achievement and oxygen was blown in at supersonic speed to burn off the impurities uh, out of the metal. We were stretched from Etruria right up to the Grand Hotel in Hanley uh, we got the plant spread out the byproducts from the iron making furnaces what's known as the, uh, the, the slag from those furnaces was crushed and used um, for tar macadam. We brought the iron ore in, the local coal, the collieries were supplying us with the coal, so we, we keep a, you know, local industry going in that respect. The coke that we produced for the iron making from, from our own coal supplies, that, that we got our own coke ovens, the, you know, the byproducts from there were numerous. We got our own uh, gasometer, we used so much um, of the coal gas on the plant, but at one time we were supplying the gas board in Etruria to such an extent that they converted, I think it was three quarters or more of the pottery industries in Stoke-on-Trent to gas from the old bottle kilns. So there were a lot of little hidden things that were going on that perhaps you know people didn't appreciate. Change location, change location, change location. Look where we are, we're at Stoke Stadium which used to be next to the midst of school. This is the school I used to go when I was known as Clark Kent. The time machine is broken again. It needs a real other kick to get it started. I'm Stanley Matthews. I'm a better football kicker than Superman. I can do it. 
Overnight, down in the mouth, Stoke City were transformed. Stanley Matthews was back with the club, and shoals of telegrams left him in no doubt about his welcome. It was great, really, to come back uh, at 46 years of age. I knew very well that, you know, a lot of press says it's too late to play in at 46, but I knew I was OK. But, of course, the first match, when there was over 30,000 a year, uh, was a big concern, really, that things didn't go right or what have you. But re my fitness uh, didn't bother me. Wearing the stripes he first put on 31 years ago. 46-year-old Stan was soon giving the Huddersfield defence the biggest run around they've had this year. He laid on a perfect chance, the ball went to the Huddersfield net, and there it was. He'll be playing when he gets the old age pension. It was very exciting. And then we had some wonderful players. We had Jackie Moody, we had Eddie Stewart, we had Eddie Clamp. Stan's return had sparked a promotion challenge which left Stoke only needing to beat Luton at home to be crowned second division champions. I remember I was on the halfway line, I think, and uh, Jimmy McEnroe, what a play he was. He was playing the inside left and he swung the ball right through. Stanley Matthews. It was easy to beat the ball, he was just moved it past him with him back on that. Back in the first division. Look, I found this big battery in the school. Can you use it for the time machine to get us back to the 21st century? Let's try. Battery charging, battery charging, battery charging, battery charging. Let's go! Yes, it's working. Hold on tight. Bye, Superman. Bye. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie, are you there? Can you tell me what happened in the past? Yes, I'm here, Nathan. It was good because we saw Superman and Sir Stanley Matthews, a great footballer from Stoke. There was lots of smoke in the air those days, but now the iron foundries have gone, it's much clearer. So, Professor, do you think you'll ever use the time machine again now it's broken? I will build a new time machine so that we can travel in the past and learn think about today and the future. That's all for today. Remember, lightning will always strike and thunder will always rumble. Good night from Thunder News.